This is topic 2.1, formula percentage yield and atom economy. So for this topic, you should be able to define the terms empirical and molecular formula and explain the relationship between them. You should be able to calculate the molecular and empirical formula given data uh, using composition by mass or percentage composition. Define molar gas volume and calculate reacting gas volumes from chemical equations. Define percentage yield and calculate percentage yields using chemical equations and experimental data. Use percentage yield to determine the amount of reagents needed for a reaction. And define atom economy and calculate atom economies using chemical equations. So empirical and molecular formulae. So the empirical formula is the formula which shows the simplest volume, simplest whole number ratio of atoms of each element of the compound. The molecular formula is the formula which shows the actual number of atoms of each element in a molecule. So for example, the molecular formula of phosphorus 5 oxide is P4O10 and its empirical formula is P2O5. So to determine the empirical formula of a compound, you must first calculate the amount in moles of each element present in a sample and then calculate the simplest whole number ratio of the moles. For example, a compound contains 4.6 grams of sodium, 2.8 grams of nitrogen and 9.6 grams of oxygen. Find the empirical formula. And this is just done here in a table. So we have our 4.6 grams, 2.8 grams and 9.6 grams of the respective elements. The molar masses are then written in, so sodium is 23, nitrogen is 14 and oxygen is 16. We find the number of moles, so 0.2 for sodium, 0.2 for nitrogen and 0.6 for oxygen. And then we divide by the smallest number and the smallest number is 0.2. So for sodium we get 1 for nitrogen, 1 and for oxygen, 3. So the ratio is 1 to 1 to 3, which gives us the empirical formula of NaNO3. To deduce a molecular formula, you first calculate the empirical formula, then you use the RFM, which will be given in the question, to determine the molecular formula. So for example, to deduce the molecular formula of a compound with empirical formula CH2O, and the relative molecular mass is 180 grams per mole. So the mass of the empirical formula is 12 for the carbon plus 2 ones for the, uh, the hydrogen and 16 for the oxygen, which gives us 30 grams per mole. We divide the formula mass or the molecular mass by the mass of the empirical formula. 180 divided by 30 is 6. So the molecular formula is 6 times the empirical formula, so that becomes C6H12O6. Now looking at molar gas volumes. So when gases react, the volumes consumed and produced, measured at the same temperature and pressure, are in ratios of small whole numbers. And it was the Italian chemist Amadeo Avogadro who gave an explanation of this behaviour, proposing what we now know as Avogadro's law. And this states that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. So it follows from Avogadro's law that whenever we see an equation for a reaction between gases, we can substitute volumes of gases as the same ratio as numbers of molecules. So if we consider the equation, N2 plus 3H2 gives us 2NH3, which is formation of ammonia. Since one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to form two moles of ammonia, then one dm cubed of nitrogen reacts with three dm cubed of hydrogen to form two dm cubed of ammonia. Finally, in this topic, atom economy. So in any reaction, chemists strive for the highest possible percentage yield in order to ensure processes are cost, uh, cost effective and efficient. The percentage yield tells you after the reaction is completed and the products are purified, how much you made compared to how much you possibly could have made. However, it tells you nothing about the amount of waste material you produced. So to ensure processes are environmentally friendly, atom economy must also be considered. So to calculate atom economy, it's the mass of desired products divided by the mass, total mass of the products times 100. It's particularly important in industrial processes, which often use multi-ton quantities of reagents. 
So for example, in the reaction below, ethanol is a desired product. The atom economy to produce ethanol is the mass of the desired products divided by the total mass of the products times 100. So the mass of ethanol is 45. The total mass of the products is 104.5. Multiply that by 100 gives us 44%. So atom economy can be expressed as a percentage, in this case 44%. Values can be increased by finding 